If you're looking to create more depth out of a seascape, here are five things that I think about that might help you in your own work. Now, I'm working in oils today, and if you want to see a complete list of the materials I'm working with, you can find that in the description below. The first thing to think about is the perspective of the scene. And it might seem a little tricky in a seascape because you're working with all this moving stuff, moving waves and everything, but there is a slight perspective to the scene. If you look at the shoreline here, it is generally parallel with the cresting waves and the, the ones following behind it. So having a basic understanding of that perspective can help you establish your scene. So I'll lay that out here, starting with a, a basic line for the horizon. I'm not working with any real specific color, just something that's kind of a, a middle gray. Um, if we think about the horizon line as the most distant wave, as we move forward, we can start to establish just some basic perspective um, on the, the scene here. Now, in this case, the scene is broken up by this little wash here, but there is still generally uh, an angle to the shoreline here that we can start to establish. Now, this is something that you don't necessarily have to think about right out of the gate. Um, it's something that you can bring into your painting a little bit later on, but I think having a basic understanding of that early on can be really helpful. Now, the second thing to think about is color and color temperature. In this example here, I've started just by blocking in some basic colors, and you can see that this it's really not all that accurate compared to the reference photo. But this is a good start. This is what my brain was thinking about when I first encountered the scene. Blue sky, blue water, and so I painted blue. But there's actually a lot more nuance to it. And the way I like to think about it is by working from the horizon line forward here. Uh, now, it's not about necessarily just matching the scene because if you're working in the landscape, it's going to be different every time. So the criteria that you really want to explore is temperature and saturation. Generally, as you work back in to the, into space along the horizon line, what you get is a lower saturation of color and something that is a little bit more neutral. Often there's kind of haze in the sky that picks it up. And so um, what I'm doing now is mixing on a little bit of, of magenta, which is kind of a cool red, um, some ochre, and I'm gonna kind of kill it with uh, kind of a, just kind of a muddy mixture of blue and some of that dark gray. If I bring that in there, you can see right away that's a wildly different color but if you allow the, the color to kind of scrape across the surface, it'll show some of that blue underneath and you can start to blend that. Now, the, if we're thinking about color theory, what we're thinking about are uh, opposing colors on the color wheel. So blue and orange are complements of one another. They're opposite on the color wheel. And so as I, as I try to tone down the blue, I'm gonna be thinking more about adding uh, more of an orange hue to it. Uh, and then I'm also lightening the color by adding some white. White has a, a, the effect of desaturating a color because it's colorless. And so as I'm adding that white, it's also achieving the effect that I'm going for. Now, as we look at the sky as well, there often is a transition from the sky right along the horizon to the area just above it where you might get a little bit more saturation. So if I add a kind of a stronger kind of cyan blue, you can kind of bring that in here. Now in this case, I'm not necessarily matching the color of the reference photo, but again, kind of thinking through some of the areas that you might want to pay attention to as you're painting your own seascape. Uh, and then the final aspect of the sky to kind of pay attention to is what happens right at the kind of the top of the painting the sky where it generally gets a little bit darker and it shifts more towards a violet. And so in, in this case, I'm building up just light layers scumbling on top of one another to allow the, the previous layer to show through a little bit. But I'm gonna sneak up on this color, keep adjusting. Now I'm gonna let this sit where it is now and start working on the, uh, the ocean here. I wanna get those waves. And the, the challenge here is, and if you're looking to create depth, is to see that shift from the horizon line to this foreground, where we have these darks here that recede away from us. The, 
What is deceiving here, though, is because the ocean is against the light sky, it's appearing darker than it actually is. And so what we want to do is we want to lower the saturation and actually make this a little bit lighter. And as we move forward, we're going to create uh, kind of more saturated and richer darks in those areas that we see there. And in just those areas, it should be enough for us to create some additional depth. So there's a lot happening in this scene that runs contrary to what we know about creating depth. Uh, you know, so for example, you know, we, we know that sharper edges advance um, and the horizon line here is a nice sharp edge. So we're gonna talk a bit about that in a little bit. And, and in terms of color, again, we have that higher value contrast in that background, which is gonna wanna come forward. So we have to kind of artificially uh, manipulate that. The final thing that you want to want to block in is the foreground here. And what I'm looking for is just an average color. Uh, and so I'm, I'm taking the highlights and I'm taking the shadows, kind of blending my eyes so that I can see just an average color. I'm not worried about matching it precisely. I'm going to massage that and refine that later on. So the next thing you want to think about is the scale of your marks. Uh, again, this gets a little tricky in a seascape because you have a lot of texture in the foreground here. But again, if we've already covered lines of perspective, you want to bring that back to your mind right now. Be thinking about the perspective as you go and think about larger marks like this in the foreground. And as we move back, you're going to gradually get smaller, especially with the larger waves like this one back in here. Let me kind of bring in this so we can see it. I'm gonna bring it down here into this light area so we can see it a little bit better. But you wanna think about then gradually making them smaller. And if you look just in this section here of the painting, we're moving vertically up the painting only about an inch or so, but you're going back in space a tremendous amount. That's where it gets really critical. And what you wanna do is you wanna gradually move your marks. Here, let me grab a really dark or dark. You want to make your marks really kind of trail off towards that background there. Get increasingly tighter as you move back. And that's going to help you to suggest that depth on the, on the, in the seascape there. So up next are edges. Uh, you can see what I've done here is I've really softened this horizon line. And it's very different from the reference photo here, and we talked about that earlier, that a sharp edge tends to advance. So what we're doing is we're artificially adjusting the composition to help push that, that, that horizon line back farther by making it softer. And you can do that just with a kind of a dry brush if you're working wet into wet, kind of soften it. You can use your finger, use whatever tool you need to to try to soften that edge back there, pushing that back. And then what that does is it creates contrast against some of the sharper edges in the foreground. And then with the cresting waves, in order to create more motion, you can be thinking about edges in a way such that the, the sharper edge, the sharper kind of point or part of the wave is right here on the front of the crest. And as you wrap up around the wave, you're softening it even farther. In this case, there's some wind in the scene that's really pulling that sea spray back into the distance here. And then as you're thinking about edges here in the foreground, you can bring this edge forward by sharpening some of the edges here in uh, against the sand, but then softening it as you move back. And that variation between sharp edges and soft edges is really what moves the eye through the composition. Now the final thing you want to think about is texture. Now in this case, I haven't finished the uh, the sand here, and I'm going to switch to a palette knife to demonstrate how texture can advance uh, the, the perspective as well. If we've been using the brush throughout the entire composition, a palette knife is going to be noticeable to the viewer here. And you can create really sharp edges like we talked about, and if you just kind of tap along the surface, not thinking too much about trying to control the paint, but allowing it to kind of do what it it's going to naturally do on the surface, it can create that contrast against the texture of the water and the texture of the sand. So again, I started with that middle color and I can lift out some of the highlights like I'm doing here. And as I'm doing that, I'm kind of dragging along 
kind of the lines of perspective. I'm thinking about the structure of the the seascape here. So I'm thinking about what would happen if I were to scrape this palette knife over the surface of the sand, and how it changes back in here. And I'm going to change that perspective and change the direction of my marks to push that back. Uh, and just let the materials kind of do what they do. I can also come in with some of these darker shadow colors to then bring in additional color contrast and value contrast. And again, using that palette knife to create some of that depth. All right, here is a quick study that I created incorporating all of those tips. So leave your comments below. Tell us how you create depth in your own seascapes. And thanks for watching.